Well, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Sometimes these conversations become very heated. Thank you so much for making time. I apologize for that slight technical. It's not technical, really. Just that slight misbehavior. So we fixed it, and it is OK. All right? Let's continue the conversation. It's not a fight. Steve Biko is still here, entrepreneur. Rebecca Moraji, Lo youth leader, strugglers movement is still with us. We're talking about what needs to be done to create the jobs, Steve. And you're saying that it's not the work of the government to do that, but they keep on promising. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that um, the people we look up to keep promising us things they cannot deliver. For me, I believe uh, the only way we can actually bring the change is for the young people to arm themselves with the weapon called a voter's card. Yeah. Wait for August 2022, go and vote for a preferred candidate who will actually be able to go to parliament or the county assembly and push for the right policies that will actually create the right business. I mean, the one positive thing that uh, we have in this country is devolution. It's, it's created a lot of opportunities waiting to be grabbed in manufacturing, in agriculture, in logistics, in security, in hospitality, in healthcare, in education. Opportunities are there. The challenge is we do not have access to credit to be able to take them up. That is one. And then two, we have leaders who are more concerned about holding on to power than actually just creating the right environment for more people to thrive. Yeah. We have this mentality whereby I want to be the only person who has money so that I can pay for your bills. For me, I believe the young people should vote in the right people so that we believe in institutions, an institution that is actually working so that healthcare can perform, education can perform, yeah. uh, governance can perform, so that it doesn't matter whether it's Trevor as the boss or not. Whoever manages the institution will see deliver for the people. Okay. That is what we need to have. Okay. And, and one of the biggest problems I have with young people is that we are, no, we are not courageous enough to speak the truth because we are afraid if I speak the truth, then I might lose an opportunity that I was waiting for to come for me. So I bootleg, I, I am able to apologize for the wrong, and many people are suffering. If you look at the um, deputy president's uh, rally in my backyard in Bungoma, 90% of the people who are attending the rallies are young people. On a weekday, Trevor, I mean, honestly, if you came to Nairobi and asked me whether I'm going to watch a politician, I will just say I'll watch in the evening on news because you have to go out and look for, for the bread. So the people who are actually attending these rallies, they have nothing to do. They're actually going there hoping to get a handout. And, the, and, and, and this mindset of handouts is actually the biggest imped, impediment for the young people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mora. Just to echo something. Yeah. Um, Steve, being a youth is not is not the end of life, true or not. And you'll not be a youth till you die. True. Being a youth is a face. It's a face in life. And I believe that right now we complain as youths, but it doesn't end as at being at being a youth. Let's be start from there. Uh, you had talked you had said about electing the right people. It doesn't stop from electing the right people. And I believe that when we keep on saying we need to vote just to elect the right people is where we lose it as a country. You elect the right people, but you st we still need to do a follow-up. We cannot just vote. It's a, it's a ceremonial process. To befunga your story, we, we continue doing what we, we, we want to do. We need to be there. We need to be actively involved in political processes, not just voting, but push for those policies. policies. Come up with what you want as a County. I'm from Nakuru County. What do I want employed? Do I want art all over the streets? I, I go to the re relevant offices, the right, the real people who are elected, the real people who are elected, the right people. I go to them and tell them this is what I want as a youth. Not just electing them and just sitting down. At it. Since I elected the right people, it's over and done with. No, we need to follow up. We need to be actively involved in these processes. Yeah, but also we've seen some appointments for young people, but. Have they lived up to expectation in your, in, in your assessment? In my assessment, there are some who have lived up. There are some I really do not think they have. I would have wished Alex was here. He sent his apologies, right? Yes. I would have wished he was here because I wanted to actually ask him. He was a convener for Youth for BBI. I personally never supported BBI for my own personal reasons, but I wanted to understand why, how he was appointed in a board and how he would have wanted to to help the youths yeah. in such areas. There are people like Kas Nadia. She's, she's really doing a good job with Kenya Mimi the campaign, which is a really good campaign towards helping Kenyans, understanding who we are as Kenyans and ending these vices of tribalism and changing the narrative, which is a really good campaign. But the others, some which I wouldn't want to mention, I, I am not sure. Okay. I wouldn't say I'm not sure. <laughs> Trevor, yeah. um, I, I like the fact that she's saying that we need to 
we, we don't need to stop at the ballot box, but go ahead and actually hold the leadership accountable. But we need to understand that our society, our society is actually split into different strata. For me, as a citizen, it's my role to reasonably elect the right leader. It's the role of the media and other institutions to hold the leader accountable to what they promised. So if, as a young person, if I vote for Trevor, then it's the role of citizen to actually hold accountable Trevor to what he promised that he will deliver, balance and checks. And that is why it's very paramount that every young person votes in the right MCA and the right MP, the right senator and the right women rep, because these are the people who actually act as watchmen over overall policy implementation by the executive. Yeah. And we need to say the truth. When any politician stands up and says, I will appoint four young people, those four jobs will benefit four people only. You've asked if young people have done any good thing. And I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm not rebellious. I'm not, I'm not anti-government. For me, I believe in speaking the truth and then being able to address issues from there. No young person has performed well who's been appointed in government. That's unfortunate truth. And it's not about us young people asking for government appointments, no. Youth are actually split into two groups, the urban youth and the rural youth. And most all of them want one thing. I just want an opportunity to make a livelihood that is honest and law abiding. That those want to be entrepreneurs, that those want to be in entertainment, that those want to be employed. So what we need is the right environment that will adopt and support talents and entertainment. The right environment to create jobs for those ones who want to be employed. The right environment for those of us like me who want to be entrepreneurs to be able to employ other people. That is what actually we want. And what, what I'm requesting the media is to hold accountable all these top politicians who go around promising things that are not true. Yeah. Because if you tell me that Bika will give you a job, it will only benefit me and my family. It will not benefit you, Trevor, or her. Because at the end of the day, I'm the only one who's going to receive the salary and it alone. So what can benefit other young people is having the right policies that will support what needs to be done. OK. Yes. But also, the other thing about the young people is the people who claim that they've thrown ethics out the window. They want to make money by hook or crook. You can't, you surely can't blame the politicians for that. This is a mindset situation, right? It's a mindset issue. I, I think um, we deserve what we get. Politicians are a true reflection of who we are as a people. Simply, we, we, because, I mean, we are a democracy where the majority win. So when you look at uh, the caliber of politicians we've elected, it's simply a representation of who we are. And um, as we were discussing earlier, I will never feel sorry for Kenyans because we deserve what we are getting at the end of the day. We vote in wrong people, then we complain. We vote in wrong people, then we complain. And the issue of young people throwing ethics and integrity outside the window to make money at any cost is because of desperation. We've reached a level whereby I also want to live a life like Trevor. I want a V8, I want to live in Karen. And since uh, I have a degree and for the last 10 years I've not gotten a job, and someone has offered me to make money whichever means. And this is a problem because we've made it so difficult for young people to succeed. First and foremost, we've put a peg on leadership that unless you have these qualifications, you cannot become a leader. So it, it locks out millions and millions of Kenyans from actually accessing the leadership aspect. So for, for young people to get into leadership, corruption has to step in. You, you, you go get a, a degree from River Road, you go get a certificate from River Road, which is actually wrong. So the society is rigged against young people. And that is why you're seeing many young people getting into wrong businesses, breaking the law and things like that, because they're only trying to survive. And, and the morality of a country fails because fish rots from the top downwards. So I will still blame the government. I will still blame politicians, because they are, they're the ones in charge of how the country should run. Uh, I was having an argument about corruption and impunity. It is immoral of me to demand President Uhuru to handle corruption. And when I'm stopped by the police, I'm the first one to remove 50 bob and give it to them. I have no moral authority to ask the president to deal with corruption if personally, as a person, I can actually not hold myself accountable. And that is why politicians know that we are all corrupt. So they will be corrupt because they know to deal with us they have to be corrupt. I'll give you a good example. In Moranga, there was a Harambe. The deputy president actually rejected the senator's contribution of 40,000 and told him, go bring more money. Where is this guy supposed to get more money from? 
You see, so these guys know, they, they, they know that we know that they are corrupt. And they know that they know we are, as young people, we are corrupt. So it's a mind game of trying to see who can outsmart the other in terms of being corrupt. And that is a problem. The system is rigged against us. And that is why um, I feel happy when I see young people like her actually trying to do something. But I will challenge her to take it to the next level whereby stop hanging out in Nairobi, big hotels and clubs, come to Ebuye, go to Mombasa, go to Moranga, go to Marala, and talk to the youth there. Yeah. Talk to them. Mora. Um, in response to that. direct that, challenge, yes. In <laughs> response to that, as Strugglers Movement, we have started that. We have representatives in different wards. You said recently, which is probably two days ago, I was talking to who's very interested in joining the strugglers movement because she resonates with this. Why does she resonate with this? Because she's tired of complaining on Twitter. We as Kenyans have this behavior, awkward behavior of complaining on Twitter. I had that behavior as well, we didn't deny. We complain on Twitter, we rant, and we forget about it. She wants to go on the streets because revolutions start forget we, we forget that we complain 10 people will retweet 20 people will like your posts and we move on life moves on we want to effect that change and we don't want to be a complaining generation we've had that with our previous generation of our parents and it has not worked for them for us we want to go on the streets we want to fight for these spaces we want to be actively involved in these spaces it's really good that biko would say that oh corruption no we don't want to talk about it anymore we want to act on it that's what we as strugglers movement as young people would want to do we want to act on it how, how do you plan on acting on it first of all african settings call call a corrupt person out what what would be the first reaction to them shame start investigating and we'd, we'd want independent bodies i don't expect escc to just be going round and round in circles i've been reading on the papers that they recently retrieved two million worth bribes from a police officer 26 26, 26. million see these are the things small things that will eventually lead up lead us to at the top of the hill because at the end of the day to complain from the ground and finish but it starts with baby steps baby yeah steps. but as a, as, a, as a strugglers movement what are you doing then to try and fix the social fabric that is deteriorating at a very alarming rate mm -hmm. civic education it all boils down to civic education. Um, we are living in a generation where if everything is available through the internet, information is ready. If I want to know how to rob a bank, YouTube, and I'll get it. In some cases, people knew how to shoot from YouTube. But the moment we start educating people on, number one, if you accept a bribe from someone, if uh, a politician gives me a thousand bob, if he doesn't deliver, I buy, I bought, he bought my vote. These are the things we need. We are constantly telling our our members in the movement and all Kenyans that the moment you accept a bribe is the moment you have sold your soul to the person. Story measure. You don't hold them accountable. You shouldn't hold them accountable. Number two, as young people, we are, we want to be a woke generation. We don't want to be that generation whereby we assume that things will be done for us. We want to do them practically. We want to be there when policies are being made. We want to be there. We want to be in the town halls giving our opinion on such things. That's what we are pushing for us. Okay. Trevor, yes, um, unfortunately, uh, many can think I'm rebellious or I'm just anti-everything youth. No, youth are very hopeful, they're hardworking, but we need to be real. The only way we can have honest conversations is to actually put things on the table. I like, she's living an utopian world. Everything for her is idealism civic education, things like that. Since 2013, this administration made sure that civic education is dead in this country. For one reason, because to, to have control over a population, you need to actually control what they learn and what they hear. So remove civic education. So now people don't understand the role of government. People don't understand what the role of government is supposed to do. You, you see, when, when um, for example, I'm on the ground campaigning for MP. Guys come and ask me, nipe kazi, nipe kazi. Na kupe kazi kutoka wapi? Mimi, you elect me, I'll go to parliament and serve you as a legislator in terms of crafting laws. Um, I don't have the mandate to give you work. But the young people don't understand that it's not the role of government to create jobs. You see, that is a problem. So if we need to do civic education, it needs to be entrenched into the constitution. That civic education is a must. 
That's why I was talking about institutions that work. So that it doesn't matter who's at the helm of that particular institution. Institutions must work. It's not the role of an organization to come and say, we want to do civic education. And currently, or unfortunately, the laws of the land do not support that. Yeah. Civic education is supported by the Constitution. Yes, exactly. In fact, they call it public participation. Yes, but is there budgeting for it? No. There's none. And that is why the media needs to actually come out and highlight some of these things. It is very important. Two, for me, it's, it's, it's I mean, who's, who's um, like, if, if I'm to look at the strugglers movement, I support them because I want as many young people having the political conversation discourse. And the current young person is very difficult to have their attention. Yeah. So I like the way they've come up in terms of getting the attention of young people. And I'm challenging them now to leave Nairobi, Wende Mashinani to hold barazas and, and town hall meetings and actually educate the young people on why they need to vote. Because we are not going to bring change unless we vote in the right parliament. Okay. It doesn't matter who the president will be, it doesn't matter who the prime minister or DP will be, the right parliament will sort this country out. Mm. I have a question. Yeah. What is your idea of civic education? Your idea of what civic education in, It's actually public participation in the constitution, whereby young people, I mean, whereby every Kenyan citizen participates in a key decision that actually affects them, where public money, taxes, actually supposed to be used. So civic education actually empowers and educates the public on the role of government, role of parliament, role of county assemblies, role of KRA, role of each ministry, basically just um, educating the public on what they need to understand. You know, if you understand how the system works, you're able to know how to deal with it. I keep asking the young people who are actually following politicians around. Why are they following politicians around? It's because they know to kenda kwa ruto to tapata 100 shillings, to kenda kwa raila to tapata 50 shillings. That is the only reason why they're actually attending the rallies. Other than that, nothing else is actually interesting for them. They do not want to hear anything. You hear politicians saying, oh, nini mwende mujipange, eh, mimi ni mejipanga, eh, ni kotiari. He's not addressing policies of how to reduce energy costs for manufacturing. He's not addressing issues of how job creation needs to be done. KRA is actually shutting down many companies that actually need to survive to create jobs. Parliament is not discussing such issues. So we need politicians to discuss policy issues and not tell us, wow, I'm a Jipanga, to Jipange. And that is the issue. And for me, if you want me to believe in strugglers' movement, leave Nairobi, go to Mashinani. Let, let, let us see what actually you are doing. Because me, for me right now, you're just a fancy movement. You've been funded by some people to actually push a particular conversation. Okay. And you see, Trevor, to be honest, yeah. Yes, me and you discuss and say that yeah. we will not right. feel Respond. we will not feel yeah. pity for Kenyans because we deserve everything we are getting because when push comes to shove yeah. we do not stand up and do the right thing. Okay. Now you're right of response. First of all, basic assumption. It was so bold of you to assume that we've been funded, but I'll let that slide. Don't let it slide. I, I, no, it no, don't so let it slide. No, it is so bold of you to assume that and it is fine. We believe in ourselves. We are young people who came together in order to end a struggle. I do not want to struggle in a political space as a young person. I want to end that struggle. We want, I want to see more trees planted. Recently, a country totally banned deforestation. I'd like that idea for my country. Yeah, COP26. And I'm hopeful. Actually, we are part of the countries that adopted that by 2030. Ex by 2030, exactly. And I'm hopeful for that. I am hopeful that reproductive laws would be better for us young women and Kenyans in the country. I am hopeful that taxes will be favorable, the tax environment will be favorable for me to start my own enterprise. And I'm hopeful, and that is why we joined the Strugglers Movement. That is why we started the Strugglers Movement. Not because it's a fancy idea being funded by an, an individual, just because we are hopeful that we will end that struggle. At 23 of, years of age, it is not as, I will not be 23 years for the 10 years. It is a phase in my life, and at the prime age of my youth, I'd want to end the struggle for me and very many other Kenyans. And it's a revolution, start like that. We want to change the narrative. We don't want to sit down. I'm tired of complaining. And you as well, who is older than me? You're still complaining. Have you offered a practical solution? No, you're still complaining, seated across me. That is why I'm in a movement where I want to effect change. Right to struggle. reply, Trevor. Mm. But how are you going to do it? That's the thing. Um, for me, basically, I'm very passionate about civic education. I'm very passionate about you, you calling... You believe that is where it starts? That is where it starts. When people know what they are up to, what pe when people know what they... When people know how this system works, and that's why I asked him, what is his idea of civic education? And he quite understands it well. 
Trevor. But that is what I'd want, to, when people know, as a person, if I know I deserve to be given 10 million right now, will not I fight for it? Okay. I will. I will fight for it through hook or crook, not, or not basically through hook or crook, but through every means possible to make sure that I get what I deserve. Our, in the, our forefathers, people who fought for independence, knew that they deserved their land because it belonged to them. They were in the forest. Some came out of the forest, were my condo much they cannot even close their eyes properly because of how they used to struggle to see at night. Because they knew at the end of the day they will be liberated and they, 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 because the struggle is real. People fought in, for, during the Moi regime. They were jailed for very many years. People were poisoned. But because they knew the struggle will end, they fought for it. They stood up. Not because of, for individual reasons, but because they believed as a Kenyan. The, the true nature of our nationalism. Believing that I am a Kenyan and I deserve a better Kenya. My children who are to come deserve a better country. Deserve to breathe fresh air. They deserve better road networks. They deserve better education. They deserve better health care. That is why we start a struggle. Okay. Steve. Um, first and foremost, I'm not sitting across you complaining. You are? One, I'm vying for position. So that if I get a chance to get to parliament, I can push for the right policies in manufacturing, agro-processing, production. Secondly, you ask what I've done. One. I'm one of the young people in this country who's, who's pushed young people to understand how to create opportunities for themselves. We've done a lot of civic education programs on social media constantly for the last two years. I'm the patron of Mulembe Youth Movement from Mombasa all the way to Mbale in Busia in Kakamega, where young people, where we'll, we're trying to get funding for young people to finance them and to push them into vying for positions like MC and MP. So yes, I'm doing something. And I'm, I think I'm the only young person in the country who's pushed this current administration to focus on manufacturing because it's the only place where young people can actually be able to get jobs. I don't think there's anyone else who's been able to do that. I've pushed and pushed and pushed. So I'm not sitting across and complaining and I'm not sitting here whining about something I'm not doing. I'm on the ground campaigning. This weekend, as I live here, I'm heading to Western to campaign to actually ask people today to make sure that before 5.30 p.m. gets today, they've registered as voters, because that is the most important thing to do. I will ask you, who's your coordinator for stragglers in Mombasa, or Bungoma, or Trukana? That is my question. I'm not trying to belittle your movement. What I'm trying to say is young people across the country need to come together, irrespective of your background, irrespective of your political association, whether you support A or B, to come together and realize that we are fighting a common enemy, which is an, an, an unemployment. Once we understand that, it will not be about Ruto or Raila or who, it will be about me as a young person and you as a young person bringing in the right people to make sure that I don't need to struggle and vie for a position, but I can go and do business or I can go and be employed somewhere because you did something for us as a country and we had the right leadership. And that is the issue. And we need to have sober conversations around county assemblies and parliament. The only way we are going to bring change in this country is not by shouting in TV stations and whatever, but going to the ballot box and voting the right thing. Then we hand over the mandate to Akina Trevor to hold accountable the people we've elected and make sure that they keep their promise. If a leader stands up and says, Nitaopea kazi million mbili, let us stand up and ask them, where are you going to get the jobs from? From which sector of the economy? Is it real estate? Is it construction? Is it agro-processing? Those are the questions we want to hold accountable these leaders. But unless we do that, me and you will keep shouting at each other and trying to find. And one, one of the reasons why I, I, I am very keen on your movement is because I know the people behind it. Because I also have a movement. And instead of young people working at cross purpose, we need to work together. Because one, Trevor, the promises these guys are making to us, they will not be able to keep them. Second, the four, like, um, the, 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 quali the handshake candidate talking about four CSs. He will only give those four CS positions to the people who've been supporting him and talking about him positively and not anyone else. So unfortunately, whether I'm, I'm, I'm given a job as a CS or as an ambassador, it will only benefit me. What we want is them to tell us that if we do this, youth in Bungoma will get 100 jobs. If we do this, youth in Trukana will get 50 jobs. If we do this, youth in in Kitu will get 100 jobs. That is what we need to hear. And that is why I'm challenging people like you who are pushing movement to hold leaders accountable. 
But are you going to hold the president accountable? Are you going to hold rail accountable? Are you going to hold route accountable? Because the people behind the movement are actually connected to them. So what we need to understand is, for once, can we have an honest conversation about issues that actually affect us? And to be honest, that's all. Okay. Yeah, you're a response again. All right, go ahead. I just wanted to tell him that narrative that will give the loyalists power. Well and good. But this is, that is the same narrative that has been ingrained in majority of the youths to make, to make them believe that, you know what, your vote doesn't count because at the end of the day, this guy is going to get elected and he or she will just give, give his, his surplus, what, what will I call them, to his people. That's, that's the mentality that majority of the people have, and that's why they believe their vote doesn't count, whether we'd like it or not. That's the narrative I'd want to change. I, it's, it saddens me that you'd believe that at the end of the day, same old, same old will be elected, and then nothing happens. It, it bothers me because at the end of the day, you know, you have the power, you have your movement, you know what a movement can do. True or not true? True. You know what a movement can do. You know how effectively a small group of people can effect change. A small group of people who have an ideology. And don't be quick to brush it off, especially even with your movement. Don't be quick to brush it off and believe that this, let's say even those four CS, four CS offices will be given to loyalists. I don't want to dispute or disregard, but just believe that. Imagine if you speak out. No, but the even if I was the are, president, in government. yes, even if you're you're president. If I was the president, I will give the four positions to people who are loyal to me. It's common that shows, sense. That, yeah. That's no. That shows the type of character you are. Because if I was president, I'd give the right people. I'd give the real people power. I'd give the with the qualified people power. If I was president, or when I become president, I'll give the right people power. I'll not give people who are dancing to my tune because they'll not do the right things. And that's why we need to effectively educate people that you deserve these things, apply for these things, go and talk to these people. Don't just sit down and relax and say, that person who has been shouting his name is, is assumed that they'll get power. They'll be given that position. Okay. Let's, give, so let's see some feedback that's coming through and read some of them before I get reactions from my panelists here. First up, Mwaksi says the youth didn't get to register as voters when IBC was going around doing so. They've given up their right and also their chance to put in their leaders of choice. It's a shame. Well, Jeline, uh, you say that the youth need political goodwill from leaders, but not individual youth, egocentric leaders who end up convening their self-interest. Even the informed brothers and sisters believe on reward. They will be appointed or rewarded if they make noise or become goons. Godi says um, the biggest constituent of the Kenyan voting bloc is the youth. It's easier for them to ensure that the leadership they have in place is graft free competent and morally upright. They do have this unique power. Odongo Rolex, it's true that young people are the majority, but when it comes to votes casting, they trail. Whoever will depend on them will fail terribly. Janet Mashuka says, politics is all about manipulation and saying what people want to hear, but end up not delivering. For me, I just watch from a distance as I live my life with all negatives and positives that come with it and struggle not to lose sight on what I want to achieve in this life. Okay. Ongusu says, for youth to influence decision making and attract positive change to their side, they ought to drop their political alignment and beliefs and embrace working together on policies that will transform their lives. Just listening to youth, that's Jacob Abere, just listening to youth conversation on politics and promises completely, they are lost, they are a lost lot. Why? Nobody in political affliction and gatherings has gained courage to petition a youth-friendly policy promissory note. And Lea Kula, Mdaachwa Kwamata. Kent says the youth may be 75% of the country's population, but that is not the figure that will vote. Politics is an industry, and the gatekeepers ni wale wale tu, same old was is. Kanyingi says youth need to know that they will be oppressed by their peers 